Okay, hi. So um, I am here really for uh, providing um, mostly point of view of a scientist and someone that has uh, pretty much spent their career trying to uh, advance the science in uh, health effects of, of air pollution, but also at the same time really advancing the science in terms of reproducible research. Um, so I'm just starting by showing uh, a slide from um, actually a, a, a picture from a commentary that was authored by uh, my former colleague at Hopkins, Roger Peng, um, who, you know, um, we started really to try to talk about reproducible research in air pollution epidemiology now almost 10 years ago. So in this slide, and I know some, some, some of these comments were made by Lynn uh, at, at the beginning, but basically we are, there is a, a spectrum. And so that's why every time we are trying to have a conversation about making data available versus not making data available, being reproducible versus not, you know, being replicable versus not replicable, you know, for sure, we are not gonna make any progress because there is a spectrum and I think we need to realize that there is a spectrum and we need to talk in terms of, of a co continuous and we need to acknowledge that something is possible and other things are just are not gonna be possible. So right now, I would say that specifically in our pollution research, we are on the minimum side, you know, almost at the lower end of, of the spectrum where, you know, basically there is just pop, pop, Publication is the only thing that is available, and then you can have the publication from past the code, the code and the data, and so on, until the last part of the spectrum, that's something that we are talking about that is a full um, re replication. Next slide, please. So, uh, so I, am tr I, I will try to be a little uh, provocative and giving you some good news and also some really bad news. Um, so uh, I think that, so, so there is this uh, um, tension between rep replication versus reproducible uh, research. I personally believe I've been trying to do this uh, and you will see how I've been trying that I think it's extremely hard to achieve a full Rep replication and environmental health for all the kinds of reasons, some, you know, both because of what do we mean by data, sharing the raw data, often the raw data is confidential, often there is entire career they are built on, on raw data, but on the other hand, I do believe that by achieving reproducible research, what I mean by that is reproducing the most important data, the most important results is achievable in something that we haven't done yet, but I do believe is, a, is achievable and we can make a tremendous amount of progress in doing that. On the other hand, I try to do that and I tell you what, what the problem I've been found along the way. Next slide, please. So, uh, also before doing that, I think that in air pollution research, I think we also have to acknowledge that we have reached some form of replication. What I, what I mean by that is that today, major policy regulation and setting of the National Ambient Air Quality Standard come after a, really a review of several studies. So again, what, what do we mean by rep, replication? There have been, the main results about adverse effect of pollution didn't come from only one particular study. They come from many, many studies, from many independent academic group that went to peer review and on different populations. So consistency of results across study in air pollution research, in my opinion, is indeed a form of re replication. On top of that, the two most influential study, and probably Dan Greenbaum, the president of HEI is gonna mention that the six city study in the American Cancer Society have been fully reanalyzed, and actually I should have used the word fully replicated by an independent team from the uh, Canadian uh, team headed by Dan Krosky, funded by the HEI, where an independent group of researchers in Canada accessed the raw data and reanalyzed. That was a multi-year effort and I'm sure a pretty, pretty expensive effort. I've been saying of that, I've been saying that replication is possible under tremendous amount of uh, investment, time investment and cost. I also think on the other hand that, that replication is not always strictly necessary. 
I, b I firmly believe, uh, both as a statistician and because of the, the, the tools that we are available, that often we can achieve reproducibility of our, um, our results. Next slide, please. So just a good, a good story and a bad story. So the word re, re, retired, I want to clarify, I'm not a retired scientist, but I am a retired scientist committed to re, reproducible research. Because I tried nine years ago, and I'm telling you, and I'm yelling you, I give up. It was absolutely impossible to sustain it. So I tried, Roger Peng, myself, and Scott Ziegler, make the MAPS data, the National Mortality and Morbidity Air Pollution Study. I think it was an influential study, fully re reproducible. We got money from the HEI, which was very supportive, but we could not keep up. The funding were not made, were not, uh, were not continue to be made available without, to us. There were been over 75 papers published in the, in the peer review literature that have access the MAPS data, all the software, all the code that they have reproducible the analysis. But right now, the data is not available anymore. The code is old. We just give up. We don't have the funding, the energy, and I have a lot of energy, I can assure you that, <laughs> to keep up. Next slide, please. <laughs> so uh, so that's, that is a paper in, uh, um, next, next slide, please. Uh, so just give you an example. There is a paper in American Journal of Epidemiology. That's an example of what you mean by data. In that particular paper, you can access everything that we have published. You can have a web link. You can download the actual data that inform any single analysis and the software code that, that provide that analysis. Next slide, please. So I just want to take, I, I want to provide some uh, take home message. So number one, I think that to, to the degree that we are available, we are, uh, you, you're making us our life possible to make some of the, the data, some of the code available. I'm committed, I will be happy to do that. However, reanalysis by independent investigator of data that we have to make available to have a policy impact have to go to the same level of scrutiny and peer review of we do as an investigator. If I publish a paper in New England Journal of Medicine, someone wanted to analyze my data, one impact policy, policy maker will have to assign way to the reanalysis as long as it's published in New England Journal of Medicine. That's number one. Number two, also many of the high impact, poly, many of the high impact air pollution study using are using government databases. So I am now actually using Medicare claims. Medicare claims are available to everyone. So if they, it's not fair for an independent invest, for someone else to ask to me Medicare data where he or she can go and gather themselves and re re replicate the full study. So every air pollution study or any environmental study that use government database can indeed be fully replicated by anyone without bothering the investigator. Yes, and finally, I, we need money. We need money from a government agency. <laughs> Thank you.